Hello, data folks. Thanks for joining me again on this channel dedicated to data and IT professionals. Many of you have reported challenges when trying to install Airflow on a Windows PC using Docker containers. So, in this video, we'll show you the easiest way to install Airflow without setting up Docker. Let's jump straight into it. Step 1. Install Ubuntu Terminal App. With Windows Subsystem for Linux or WSL, Ubuntu can run as a lightweight terminal environment right inside Windows. That being said, let's first check Ubuntu is already installed on this PC. If it is not installed, please go to Microsoft Store and install it from there. Once the installation completes, you can launch the app directly. Or for subsequent use, you can simply search for Ubuntu in your Start menu and open from there. When you launch it for the first time, you will need to set up a new user account and password. Once that's done, the Ubuntu terminal environment is ready to use. Step 2. Install Airflow. These are all the commands that we're going to execute to get Airflow up and running. Here, I'm installing Airflow version 3.0.6, and I'm using the supported Python version, which is 3.12. But let me give you a very important tip. I highly recommend that you always check the official Apache Airflow project page on PyPI, because the versions do change from time to time. You can find the latest Airflow version number directly from the PyPI page. And right there on the same page, over here you'll also see which Python versions are supported. Please keep in mind that Airflow usually lags behind the latest Python release. That means if you have the very latest version of Python, there's a good chance Airflow won't support it yet. That's why checking the supported Python version right over here is very important. Personally, what I do is I pick the latest Python version from this list. Please feel free to copy this complete list of commands from the link in the video description. All you need to do is change the version numbers as I've explained earlier. That's the only change required. I've designed the script such a way the version numbers are applied to all the subsequent commands automatically. Now, you could simply save these commands into a script file in your home directory, make it executable, and run everything in one go. But for this demo, I'm going to walk you through each command step by step so you get a better understanding and more control. First, please run these commands to set the version numbers. Next, update the package list using sudo apt update. Please enter the password if prompted. Then, install the required Python version along with all the necessary system packages. After that, create a virtual environment for Airflow and activate it. Upgrade pip to the latest version. And then, define the constraints file URL. At this point, we're ready to install Apache Airflow. Installation has completed successfully, and Airflow is fully set up and ready to use. From now on, every time you want to start Airflow, first set Airflow version number, activate the virtual environment, and then execute Airflow standalone command. This will start all the Airflow components along with the web server so you can access the Airflow UI. As I mentioned earlier, you can also save this file in your home directory and run it all in one go, if that's what you prefer. Please make sure to keep this terminal running and do not exit or close it while using Airflow. Now, open your favorite web browser on your Windows machine and go to localhost 8080. This will ask for credentials. The username and password are already printed in the log of the Airflow standalone command. Pick it up from there. In case you cannot find it, please keep watching. I'll show you another place where you can get your Airflow username and password. Now we are in the Airflow UI. If you're familiar with previous versions of Airflow, you'll notice that the main options used to be at the top, but in the new version, they are now placed on the side navigation bar. There are also many example DAGs available, which you can explore for learning purposes. In the next step, 
We'll disable all the example DAGs so that the UI is clean, and then we'll create our very first DAG from scratch. Step 3. Develop your own Airflow DAGs using VS Code. First, we should install VS Code on the Windows machine. If you don't already have it, go ahead and download it from the official website and install it with all default settings. Once installed, open a new Ubuntu terminal, navigate to your Airflow folder in your home directory, and type code space dot. This may install some required packages, so please wait until that completes. When VS Code opens, make sure the bottom left corner shows WSL Ubuntu. As mentioned earlier, here is the password file in case you missed noting down your credentials. And here is the very important Airflow config file, so please be careful when viewing or editing it. First, we will turn off all example DAGs by setting the load examples parameter to false. Save the changes. Next, locate the DAGs folder. This is where Airflow looks for DAGs at regular intervals and loads them into the UI. You can change this path if needed, but we will leave it as is. As you can see, we are already inside the Airflow folder, so now we just need to create a folder called DAGs. Create a new DAG file inside the DAGs folder and copy the code from the link in the video description. At a high level, this DAG runs daily. It starts with a simple task that prints a start message then moves to a welcome task that prints a welcome message along with your username, and finally ends with a task that prints a completed message. Right over here, we define the dependencies between these tasks so they run in the correct sequence. If you want to learn more about DAGs, tasks, and other Airflow terminologies, please refer to my Airflow playlist linked in the video description. Now go ahead and save the DAG file. Back in the Airflow UI, the example DAGs are still not gone. I'll talk about that shortly. But the new DAG we just developed is already visible. It may take a little time for the new DAGs to show up, depending on the file processing interval set in your Airflow config. As configured, this one is scheduled to run at 12 o'clock, but of course, you can also trigger it manually. Once it completes, you can click on each task to view the logs. As you can see, every task has successfully printed their respective messages. You can also view the entire DAG code directly in the UI, but that view is read-only. Whenever you want to add new DAGs or update existing ones, you should always use VS Code or any other editor you're comfortable with. Now, coming back to our earlier question, why are the example DAGs still visible even though we disable them? That's because disabling the examples prevents new instances from being loaded, but any instances that were already loaded will still show up. If you really want to force remove them, just activate your Airflow virtual environment and run the Airflow DB reset command in your terminal. That's all for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. Thanks for watching.